Heart disease is the leading cause of death in both men and women. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 600,000 people will die from heart disease this year, accounting for nearly one in every four deaths in the United States. Today, Dr. James Fitz from the Rutland Heart Center joins us to talk about what a nuclear stress test is, describes the two-step process of collecting information, and why the test is ordered. First of all, uh, when we do nuclear stress testing, we're using a, a radioactive uh, atomic element which is usually what we call technetium. And we use that element so that we can see the heart. And the whole idea is to determine how well blood is flowing into the heart uh, under stress. Nuclear imaging allows doctors to see exactly what's going on inside the heart by using the radioactive tracers. It acts as a light of sorts to show where there may be a tear or blockage. The nuclear test measures blood flow to your heart muscle, both at rest and during stress on the heart. It's performed like a routine exercise stress test, but provides clear images of areas of low blood flow or damaged muscle. So the most common symptom that uh, leads to a stress test is chest pain. And chest pain is variable in its description. In fact, a lot of patients don't refer to it as pain, but as more of a discomfort. Uh, such as a pressure or a tightness, but anything along those lines we refer to as, a, as chest pain. Another common symptom that can lead to a stress test is shortness of breath. Um, a common condition is a diagnosis of coronary artery disease that has been made in the past, and we will also want to sometimes evaluate that further with a stress test as well. The test does take several hours to complete. It involves taking two sets of pictures of your heart, one set during exercise, the second set while the body is in rest. So it, it, it does take some time to complete the full study. Uh, what they can expect are two separate sets of images that are taken. Uh, the reason for that is we want to evaluate the heart under stress and then be able to compare that to a uh, control set of images, which is basically the resting images. So when a patient shows up here, uh, our protocol is first they will have resting images done with that atomic element that I had mentioned that's radioactive. Uh, after they undergo those initial images, we then perform the actual stress test. That can be done in two ways. One, a patient can walk on a treadmill, get the heart rate up, and then we again administer the atomic element uh, whereby the patient then goes for further nuclear imaging uh, or we can use a medication uh, instead of having someone walk on a treadmill and that will also uh, mimic stress. Cardiologists typically order a nuclear stress test if he or she suspects coronary artery disease or other specific heart issues. And while injecting a radioactive tracer into the body may scare some, Dr. Fitz says not to worry. It's a, it's a fairly common uh, medical diagnostic study. Um, uh, we, we, it is true that we use radioactivity and that always creates probably some concern, uh, but overall the risk is very low uh, with regard to uh, radiation. Um, and, you know, Importantly, we're doing this test to evaluate for the possibility of coronary disease, which is the leading cause of death. So uh, we select patients who we are concerned enough to the point where we feel it's uh, reasonable to obtain a test like this uh, with radiation, but uh, importantly to look for any evidence of coronary disease. Um, finally, it's a non-invasive test. It does require an IV line. Um, other than that, it's, it's non-invasive, it's all imaging with cameras.